Hello everybody, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today we're pouring a 50 by 26 house for it. It's 1,300 square feet. It's four inches thick. we got two trucks coming. Uh, we're pouring 3,500 PSI mix. And it's got high range water reducer in it. So the reason we use that is so we can really loosen up the concrete without weakening it. And this allows the three of us to pour, you know, pretty good sized concrete pours with just three of us. So if you're looking, if you're looking to pour some concrete and you don't have a big crew, use definitely use the high range water reducers, the super plasticizers in the concrete. And oh look, a concrete ball there. Um, it allows you to pour the concrete a little looser and not have to kill yourself trying to get it down. So we use these every day. That's that's how the three of us can pour a lot of concrete and uh, you know just not get burnt out. So we're gonna we're gonna have at this. We're gonna dump this first truck out. You guys uh, check this out. Let me know down in the comments if you got any questions about how we dump this out. We're gonna be pulling up the wire here. We got that yellow stuff is called Stego Wrap. It's a 15 mil vapor barrier under the concrete. And we're gonna get this truck dumped right out. Now, when we attack a floor like this, we generally always like to dump the first truck right out if we can. You know, if there's not a lot of stuff to go around, pipes or drains or stuff like that, it's just flat like this. We like to get that first truck dumped right out. With us, you know, it it takes longer to dump the truck out like this than it does for us to screed it and both load it. So, you know, we like a lot of mud to work with. And we also like to get the first truck dumped out and get him back to the concrete plant so that he can, you know, load him for somebody else. And then get the, our second truck, since we got another 10 and a half yarder sitting out here waiting, get him into place, get him mixing, and ready to go. So that's kind of how we attack most of our jobs, especially our house floors like this, even the garage floors the same way, is get the first truck on site, get him back in, get him mixed up to where we want him, and then dump him right out. You know, it probably, this is 10 and a half yards, probably takes five six seven minutes to get him dumped out with good access and then uh then we can go to work we'll have we, i don't know if you noticed the blue chalk line we're going by around that outside edge there we snapped on the inside of those concrete walls we'll get a couple guys magging our edges to the blue chalk line then another guy's going to grab a grade stick probably me and set our wet pads in the middle you'll see that in a minute and then that's just basically how we attack the first load is is get our grade set get the screed out hand screed it or vibra screed it and then get it both loaded and then move on to the next truck so we you know we take it one truck at a time and we like to dump out you know ten and a half yards at four inches will go about 800 square feet this subgrade here was was really it was really bad actually there was places that were four and a half inches there were places that were seven inches in the subgrade so that always makes it a little more difficult trying to determine, you know, how level to rake the concrete out like we are right now and not get it really high or really low. Basically, it's just experience that helps with that a little bit. But the better your subgrade is, the flatter your subgrade is, the, the easier it is to rake the concrete out also as you're going. So that basically is the end of that first truck. And there I am scraping the chute down with my chute scraping method. Um, I do have a scraper, but I didn't bring it out today. So, again, there go Darren and Luke magging the edges right to the blue chalk line. And we we already determined that, you know, a, a few days ago when we came in shot grade to figure out how much concrete we needed. So we shoot the grades on the walls, get the line snap, and then we figure out how thick the, the concrete's going to be based on how uneven the sub base is. And then, like I said, what I'm doing here in the middle is just shooting these wet pads, and the wet pad is flat with that blue line on the walls that Darren and Luca magging their pads to. So 
the, this is what we go to to screed the inside of the floor by. And this is basically just wet screeding. You know, Darren's just going by. He's leaving a little bit of mark on that wet pad I made in the middle, and I'm using the outside pad on the wall. And for us, I mean, because we were taught this way and because we do it every day, this is very simple, a simple way to screed concrete. Now we're gonna use the Screed Demon vibrating screed today also, so you'll get to see that. This is a battery operated screed. Um, and I'm gonna use those two wet pads we just we struck by hand to go by. You, you really gotta have something to go by. You can't just wet screed the concrete without any type of grade to it. Otherwise your floor is gonna be out of level. It's gonna be up and down with dips and humps. Having, having these wet pads where we use the laser is going to make this floor really, really flat. I mean, it'll be at the, it'll be within an eighth of an inch usually on our floors if we go back and shoot this after we're all done. You can see how nice that screed makes it right there. It vibrates, uh, makes it really easy bow floating after. Weighs about 35, 40 pounds, so lugging it around's not too bad. We got. You know, this company, MBW, makes this battery one. They also make a gas-powered one. we got both. And I have to say, probably for floors like this, my guys and I probably, we probably kind of prefer the battery one. The battery, it uses a Milwaukee battery, just like any of your Milwaukee tools would. It's just, I don't know, it's just easy to go. There's no motor to stop and start. You don't have to worry about gas. Um, it's just It just works really easy. For stiffer concrete, let's say this is probably, you know, six, seven slump. For a four slump concrete stuff that's really stiff, you're probably going to want the gas powered one. That one's going to have a little more heavier vibration to it. But for regular residential floors or garages, this one's plenty of, this is all you need right here. Look at how hard, like, I'm working with the screed versus how hard Darren and Luke will work it. I mean, the, them two guys are really the ones doing the work, making sure the concrete's at the right level. I want it just a little bit high behind that screed. So they're making sure I'm not too high, but they're also d doubly making sure I'm not low. I don't want to leave any dips behind as I go. So it's really up to them guys to do most of the work. Yeah. All right, so we squared that last little piece up, as you saw. You know, when we pour concrete, we don't just think about the pour, we think about how we're gonna finish it too. And sometimes it just makes it a little easier finishing if if your pores are what we call squared up with each other and, not, and the edges aren't all jagged when you dump the truck out. Um, you know, when you power trial stuff, you don't like a power trial, just in case both loads don't dry the same. One might dry a lot faster than the other, is what I'm what I'm saying. You know, when you power trial, you don't want to run go from hard to wet on a jagged edge. You'd like a square edge. So that's kind of how we think about pouring the concrete. Also, as we do to some of these floors and slabs, especially the bigger ones when you got multiple loads. If it's just one or two trucks like this, it usually isn't too bad. We also like when the guy batches the concrete out. We like him to batch our trucks right back to back. We don't like him to let's say batch our truck as the first truck out of the plant 
and then batch out two or three more for other people and then have our truck be the our next truck be the fourth truck batched out like I want trucks one and two I want them right back to back that way as as we uh, go to power trial these things they're more likely to dry evenly or cure evenly and makes just the finishing process a lot easier if there's a if there's a big gap in between how he loads them then there could be a big gap in how they cure also and it just I don't know it just makes the finishing harder so when you pour pretty quickly like we do you know you just get them back to back if it's only two trucks if it's if it's multiple trucks if it's four or five trucks then maybe you know he can batch one for you batch one for somebody else batch another one for you batch the fourth one for somebody else you know maybe he could stagger them a little bit like that but usually usually if it's a two truck pour just try to get them right back to back if you know you can dump that first one right out like we like I said earlier the, the subgrade on this one was really really bad we were we, you know it was it's hard to figure the concrete yardage when the subgrade goes from say four inches thick to seven inches thick and it's just up and down all over we those orange marks you saw on the, on that yellow uh, vapor barrier were our our thicknesses you know we had four four and a half five five and a half six six and a half seven five and a half and then you know you try to come up with an average and yes you can get it pretty close but at the end of the day you're still just guessing a little bit this actually figured right around 22 yards in the most concrete for at least in our area they can put on a truck is ten and a half so we could only get 21 yards on these two trucks and it kind of figured 22 so we were like all right just give us 21 we'll hope it does it and you know if it doesn't we're gonna have to call for a balance load but um, luckily on this one you'll see we, if we just made it or not I mean if we even if we run a wheelbarrow too short I mean it's you're talking an hour to get that balance load so let's see let's see if in the end here if we actually made it or not we were kind of nervous about it after dumping that first truck because that we didn't think that first truck went quite halfway um, but he did do the thickest part also so it was we, it was like a toss-up 50 50 and there's nothing worse than running out on a floor like this first thing in the morning. First off, we know that the concrete plant is busy. Like he has multiple floors scheduled to pour, so he doesn't have a truck just sitting there waiting uh, if we run out. He's gonna have to steal one from somebody else, which is gonna screw somebody else up. So uh, if we could have ordered another yard on these trucks, we would have. But legally, they can't haul that. They can't haul 11 yards on the road here for the weight. Alright guys, so that's it. A 1,300 square foot house floor. Took us probably 45 minutes to get this poured out. We're just going to hang out. Uh, Darren and Luke will hang out and power trial this. Probably done by about 2 o'clock this afternoon. 
Again, thanks for watching. T check out this next video right here, and we'll see you on the next one.